Hello, everybody. My name is Bjorn Riversen. I'm the CEO and president of Dolphin Drilling. And in connection with our listing at uh, Euronext Growth in Oslo, uh, I'm planning to take you through a presentation to update you about our company. Um, the company was the first Norwegian driller and it was established already in 1965. And in a way, we are now reintroducing the uh, company Dolphin Drilling to public trading. And uh, of course, we've been in the market since 1965 and have had a very close connection with, what should I say, oil companies, global oil companies over all these years. Let me take you quickly uh, through the investment highlights of the company. Here we see a picture from uh, a visit just a we some weeks ago on board the Borglen uh, Dolphin. And I'll take you quickly through the key investment highlights about the reintroduction of Dolphin drilling. We, some weeks ago, we were out raising uh, 40 million. And before that, we had uh, one, we, we had <clears throat> the system coming into the company investing 20 so we have just raised approximately 60 million dollars over the last uh, couple of months and at the same time we were uh, we were we were converting all our debt to equity so per today there's a company with no debt and with a significant amount of cash we did that to return the existing fleet that we have back to work under very strong market conditions. And I will come back to that and comment on that more in details. But how we see it, we think that the world needs energy for the next years to come. And we think there will be a lot of drilling uh, coming. Number two, uh, utilize our existing organization to pursue uh, management opportunities on top of our current fleet that we are in the process of bringing back. We'll comment on that also soon. And of course, since we have no cash and since the liquidity of the company uh, with these increased day rates uh, will generate a significant cash flow, our plan is to be a dividend story and to pay back a lot of dividend to our shareholders. So that's the, the key investment uh, highlights. Let's have a little bit look at our uh, fleet, current fleet. To the left there, you see the Blackford Dolphin. Uh, Blackford Do Dolphin is uh, contracted, currently contracted to uh, Nigeria, to a company called General Hydrocarbons. And we are in the process of moving the rig from uh, Mexico, where she's been working the last couple of years for Pemex, and then through a short yard stay in uh, Las Palmas, going to Nigeria with an expected startup. Uh, I would say uh, late this year, early next year, let's say around January. And uh, and uh, then we have the Borglund, which is the second rig on the slide there. She, she currently came off uh, contract from a larger campaign in UK, in Norway, for Shell, for Pignig, for uh, Vellesley, and a couple of other, other oil companies. And she came off contract in February this year. And we uh, took her in and we phased down the, the, the manning uh, up until the summer. And we are currently having her smart stacked uh, outside Flekkefjord in the south of uh, Norway. And today we are basically marketing her heavily uh, internationally, but particularly with a focus on the UK. And we have ambitions to have a contract signed by the end of this year on, uh, on Borglen. And hopefully we will be able to deliver on that. Uh, the rig was uh, totally rebuilt in 1999, been really a good, harsh environment wor uh, when the workhorse and, uh, and done fantastic job for our, our clients. The third rig is the Bidder for Dolphin. It's a sister rig to the Borglen. She is currently also uh, stacked outside Flekkefjord in Norway and also being marketed globally, but with a f particular focus on, on the UK and international. So that's the, the, the key uh, three assets that we, we have in the portfolio. In addition to that, we have marketing rights for two rigs currently under construction at the Keppel Yards, two uh, CS60s with an eco-design for the midwater segment. 
And currently on the con uh, construction, it takes approximately 24 months to, to, to finish those rigs. And we're currently bidding them actively in Norway. And uh, two weeks ago, they were submitted to a tender towards Equinor for longer contracts on the Norwegian continental shelf. And let's see how that pans out. Uh, they are, they are, the, the contract is in a way where we just have a bare boat with the yard and with purchase options to, to buy them if the, let's say, the day rates and the length of a contract can, can defend it. But primarily, uh, per today, we are looking at it as, as a, a bare boat uh, towards the Norwegian, uh, to the Norwegian market, and they are particularly designed for that market. So that, that's, that's our current uh, portfolio. So actively marketing the rigs to sum up the, the contract status at, at the bottom of the slide, uh, Blackford on contract in Nigeria. It's a one-year contract, and that I will come back to on, on on a slide a little bit more back in the presentation. Borglen heavily being marketed in the UK, and the Biddeford mar uh, marketed in parallel with the Borglen in UK and internationally, and then with the capital units on top based on a bare boat structure. Uh, let's jump a little bit to the ownership structure behind the company. And uh, a little bit less than 40% are now being floated on uh, Euronext uh, growth. And uh, we were traded on the Norwegian OTC from 15th of September. And uh, on coming Friday, of course, the, the, the listing on the Euronext will, will, will happen. And behind the company, we have uh, SVP Global, an American uh, investment fund. And uh, we also have standard uh, behind ETC behind us with extensive uh, experience and knowledge from uh, the drilling segment. So in a way, SVP have invited uh, as a standard into the company to bring industry knowledge and competence uh, into the company in front of uh, before a listing. And I think uh, that has been a, a good move and a right move. Uh, and as I said, approximately a little bit less of 40% uh, will float from uh, and be tra traded from uh, fr Friday. We also had some comments on on lockups on uh, SVP and, and, and standard. And I can, uh, that's, a, that's a question we have had in many of the presentations and, and both SVP and uh, standard from, uh, from uh, trading, they have a six months lockup. Okay, then a little bit about the company. As I said, first Norwegian driller established in 1965, extensive uh, experience, very strong uh, organizational uh, structure, very, very strong, what should I say, infrastructure in the company. And as I, as, as I told you, I've been working a lot in Odfjell and in, in um, Songa before that was sold to, to Transocean. And I can say that this company really, really has a strong operational structure and delivering superb uh, drilling to uh, the clients. A little bit about the management, me to the left there, uh, having 25, 27 years of experience from drilling. And, and before starting taking over Dolphin, I was the CEO and president of, of Songa for six years. Then we have Stephen Cox, our CFO. He's, he, he has his background from drilling from, uh, from um, Transocean and Sedco Forex and working in Prosef, uh, a service company, offshore related service company, before he started uh, three years ago together with me in uh, Dolphin Drilling. Then we have Johan uh, Finnestad, the COO, worked his whole life in Dolphin and he's in a way the representative for our old uh, traditional uh, drilling culture, strong, strong operational culture. Uh, and uh, we're really proud of, of our operational excellence and, and results. Then we have Stem Damgård as our CCO, Chief Commercial Officer, background from Maersk and Ocean Rig and and the Sidrel uh, system, uh, North Atlantic system. Then we have uh, Per Vangsgård, he's uh, head of technology, or he's the chief technology officer, background from, uh, from C Maersk Sidrel, but before he started with us, he, he was responsible for uh, the Avilco rigs uh, at the, the Keppel Yard, and to have continuity in the two uh, new builds that, we, that I was mentioning at, at Keppel that we have the marketing rights for. 
uh, least but not la last but not least Ilva our general counsel also uh, long background from 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 uh, from banking a little bit more about the investment proposal strategy take her back to attack the company back to the stock exchange return the existing fleet to work pursue management contracts and opportunistic growth if we're going to buy something it has to have a very very high profitability because we don't want to load up with equity we would like to get money back to our shareholders to dividend quickly and that's the strategy of the company maximize dividend payout as it says in the last bullet or the last box to the to the left there uh, what so far signed the 12 month, month contract with the blackford for nigeria i will come back to day rates and length uh, uh, a little bit later on a, on a later slide get uh, this fleet back at attractive uh, cash flow we see that the market now in average here for the rings at least they deliver hundred and fifty thousand dollars a day in EBITDA uh, as we see the current market probably higher than that the market is has improved a lot over the last uh, six to twelve months we are a debt-free uh, company with uh, with cash uh, over a little bit shy of 60 million and uh, as we think uh, uh, is that we see the market as favorable now with an energy squeeze i would say globally and we think that uh, there will be a need for more drilling for the next years to come and 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 that's the in, in many ways the, the investment case uh, to take out these rigs in a increasing market uh, with a debt-free driller that has those three assets to time and to get them into the market at favorable terms and on top of that as the last uh, bullet or the last box to the right says to use the existing organization and and to put uh, uh, management opportunities on top of that uh, to to generate more cash from the owners uh, little bit about the blackford uh, i was mentioning that she is coming off a contract in mexico she just came out of the strait between miami and cuba uh, so a couple of the, some days ago she's on her way to las palmas and she will have a short sps there before she's gonna go down the west coast of africa and more up in in uh, nigeria uh, year end or early in january and be what we think she will generate cash uh, from uh, from early first quarter 2023 being then on on contract uh, as the box says there the the green box at the bottom uh, we, we commenced in in uh, it says december 2022 or in and around that i would say let's uh, let's say early january or in the january range uh, and uh, and with a day rate of 232,500 with an OPEX probably around 120, 130. So it will de definitely yield $100,000 a day with a mob fee of uh, 11.9 million or let's say 12 million uh, US dollars. And it's a, it's a one year contract with a six months break clause. They're working to develop some fields in, in, in the, or some wells in the field and and they they will uh, they have a 90 days after commencement right to 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 shorten after that they cannot shorten the contract so so that uh, that is the current contract and that that contract basically carries the the whole company including the layup cost for the two others including the gna structure of uh, of the company uh, the SPS is planned to to cost around 15 million and it's planned to, to do to take around 5 to 8 weeks so so that is 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 the blackford which is currently then uh, generating the cash uh, of the company let's say a couple of words about the uk where we are marketing the two others here we see the project sanctions in 2023 likely to exceed 10 billion and if we look a little bit back to 19 20 21 and 22 you're talking about less than a billion dollar investments in the uk and now it's it's between 10 and 11 billion which is which is expected for for 2023 and we also see the whole uh, what should i say uk shelf 
uh, improving a lot. And I, will, I have, a, have a second slide a little bit more back uh, at the back there as well for it. Commenting a little bit on the day rates. The market has, uh, to the upper left corner, we see the UDV, the ultra deep water day rates. And we see they have, since 21, let's say over the last year, they have improved from around 180 to uh, around $450,000 a day. So we talk more than a doubling of, uh, of EBITDA contribution or doubling of day rates over those uh, 12 to 18, 12 to 16 months. And of course, the mod semi market, which our rigs are, they are mod rigs, and we see they are fully co correlated. And of course, when the market tightens, the difference in day rate are also uh, getting more narrow or getting closer. And if you look at the current, let's say, investment thesis, is that if we get, or when we get these three rigs on the uh, on contract based on the current day rate level, $100,000 a day times 365 times three, then we have all the three rigs up and running. You're talking about an illustrious EBTA for the company for three rigs uh, no, around the 130 million uh, mark. And it uh, basically, after GNA and, and, and our operational capex, the company has the capability easily based on current day rates or current low day rates to, to, to yield around $100 million in net cash flow per year. But if we look at the, 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 the last upturn in the market, and if we take in the average from 2007 to 2016, it's of course significant higher. If we're talking about, let's say around there, it's around the 350 mark, then the company will, will uh, generate north of 200 million in uh, EBIT uh, there with three rigs in operation with around uh, 350,000 in, in day rates. And that, that is not uh, unlikely. Um, Looking a little bit and commenting, as I said, more about the UK market. If we go back to the end of last year, we see that the, the market, uh, there were three CMI submersibles operating in the UK. And up until today, let's say 10 months later, eight, nine, 10 months later, there's 10 rigs on contract in the UK. And that has happened over the last 10 months. And uh, there's not much idle drilling capacity in the UK, and the Borgland and the Biddeford are in many ways next in line. We also have the Stena Spey there, and then we have some three uh, laid-up rigs, It's the, or two laid-up rigs, one from uh, Ocean uh, Valiant, from Diamond, and, and we have uh, one from Transocean, the Transocean leader. And of course, with significant uh, uh, mobilization cost related to that. So, so we see that the market is very tight. And remember the sanctioning of projects that we just saw in, on one of the previous slides. We think the UK market will be very tight from uh, 23 and 24. It will start in 23 and it will be super tight in, in, in 2024 and onwards, particularly with the investment uh, or the uh, regime where the UK government has gone from cold to hot, where they are now uh, giving out licenses and, 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 and pushing oil companies to invest and to get, to get uh, gas, gas from their own shelf into the pipeline structures. And, and I think we will see much more drive on that over the next, uh, next years to come. Um, Looking a little bit on the uh, international mod semi submersible market, it's already north of 300,000. And, and remember what I said uh, at an earlier slide, if we, if we have around uh, OPEX around 100 mark, 100 and 120 mark, depending a little bit on what market we are in, uh, we are already uh, way uh, north of the, of the $100,000 a day uh, that I talk, spoke about to, to give a yield in the company around $100 million uh, a year in, in EBITDA. And uh, here we see the, the there is both on the UDV market, which has uh, rock skyrocketed. And we also see at the circle to the, to the right there, we see uh, how the, the moored uh, market is also tightening. Uh, now approaching the 350 mark. Uh, so that was a little bit on the uh, demand side. But I think the most important thing uh, in this uh, story is that we, we are having more semi-submersible rigs. If we go back just some years to 2016 or to 2012 to 16, as you see on the graph to the left there, we had approximately 140 140 rigs in the world and it was pretty stagnant 
that's the the black line there showing 140. In this downturn, uh, the drillers have scrapped uh, from the 140 mark down to the 34 mark. We have scrapped, uh, what should I say, 85%, 90% of uh, the available rigs. So there are no, uh, there's, there's not a big bunch of rigs to mobilize when they need to drill. So now when we are escalating, there's very, very few assets available to do this. So it's both uh, the demand is coming up, but the supply uh, side has re is, is really super tight. There's not many rigs available. All those 35 rigs, we are probably talk talking 10 to 15 in China. And then we probably have around the 20 mark available in the world, world for more rigs. And, and that's not many, to put it that way. We have never seen anything like that over the last uh, decades. So this niche market has scrapped much, 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 much more than the rest of the market. Looking holistically at the whole uh, drilling market, approximately 45 to 50 percent of the drilling market, floater market, has been scrapped. But here you see that it's north of 80 percent that has been scrapped. So it's even it's tight in the world on rigs, but it's even tighter on standard, more semi-submersible drilling rigs. Okay, talking a little bit about efficiency, because efficiency is something that has been discussed in the market for a long time. But this, on this slide, there's two points I would like to convey and to stress and to focus on. And that is, if you look at the curve, we see the, 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 the progress, the ROP, the return, which basically it's uh, meters drilled per day. We see that we early in the between 2000 and 2004 with the rigs that we just saw here the Borglund, Biddeford and Blackford typically had uh, meters per drill in the range of 75 to 90 meters uh, for a long time now we, we saw in this tight market and with the new rigs that came out the the the, the highly automated sixth generation rigs they they their efficiency was more or less around the 50. It was close to half, at least it was a 40% reduction. And now over the last years, um, in, in a relatively tight market, we have seen that these six generation rigs are starting to climb up to, to, to become as efficient as the, the, the standard rigs that we, we have. And, uh, and uh, very often in the time market, also the efficiency falls. So let's not hope that this time that the efficiency uh, falls again. So, so uh, what we see here is that old rigs, when it comes to uh, to drilling uh, meters per day, it's uh, it's uh, they are very efficient, very very efficient. If you have if you have a very very high uh, degree of automation, it tends to drive down the speed. Um, looking a little bit at our operational experience and that points in the direction uh, of uh, management contracts where we can bring, let's say, existing rigs with owners who doesn't have the operational capability and access to the customers out to the market. Mm -hmm. And as you see here, we, we have experience both from uh, semi-submersibles, drill ships and jackups. Currently, we are focusing on semi-submersibles and uh, drill ships and we see that we have operated in the Gulf of Mexico you see it uh, to, on, on the slide or the map to the uh, left there and we of course operating the coast uh, the South American coast down to Brazil and of course the Golden Triangle on the other side in West Africa do a lot of drilling both with the Belford and uh, the Bolette on the deep water fields there but also the Blackford in that those areas long operational track road and as we said the, the Blackford is now coming back to Nigeria again and she's done work there before and of course then you see the the harsh environment area you see the MED you see uh, East Africa and you also see operations in in Asia and both in the harsh segment in the benign segment and in the ultra deep water deep water segment with both mooring and, and, and dynamically positioned assets. Okay, monetizing on core competence, sitting on a, on a, on a driller with, with this, what should I say, extensive operational capacity. Uh, of course, our first strategy, as I said, was to, uh, to use the improved market to bring our current 
assets back to 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 work to get them out in a market that goes up and to time that in a good way to take out minimum hundred thousand dollars a day in EBITDA per week. Number two is of course to win a contract and to bring out the two capital rigs and as I said currently being bidded towards Equinor for the Norwegian continental shelf with the next generation technology to bring that into uh, a high technology market like the Norwegian market. Thirdly, to use that operational platform that we have to bolt on other op uh, operational opportunities through management contracts to customers who owns assets and that need to bolt on assets and to connect them to uh, valuable contracts with customers. We are in that spot. You need to have a long operational track record. You need to have the maintenance systems. You need to have a proven track record to be able to bring that back. So to take those opportunities and to plug that in there, in, the, in, uh, in last upturn we operated 10 rigs at peak, so we have the operational uh, capability and the technological and, 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 and human uh, uh, capacities to, to, to make that happen. And then of course to look at that if we see some opportunities, but it has to have a, a, a very short payback if we see some opportunistic growth opportunities of course we will we will consider that but we will try not to ruin or not focus on on doing something that jeopardizes the the, the dividend story that the company is now perfectly placed to 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 execute on so that is something that uh, both us as uh, management and the board is is uh, focusing hard on um, Let's have a little bit uh, focus on the rigs again and look a, a little bit more in perspective what we have achieved in the past. The problem now is that or the, the challenge has been that we have been in a very uh, bearish market for let's say eight to ten years. We are the reverse of speed blind. People have been operating at OPEX for a long long time. Now the market as I said has increased 100 to 150 percent in day rates just over the last year but if we look at the screen here we see the the track record for the rigs last upturn what what did they achieve and and think about it a little bit in the context of as i said if we have day rate around 250 we have hundred thousand dollars in ebitda if you're north of 300 to 350 the company will yield 250 per day here we see for instance the borglen uh, to the to the left uh, there the borglen on uh, on the last uh, last uh, let's say peak, we're able to operate had the day rates uh, well above the five hundred thousand mark, and uh, uh, the Blackford the mid uh, mid four hundreds, four twenty five four twenty eight there as you see the one in the middle, and then you had the Biddeford who who were close to the five hundred mark or four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a day, so you see that then the question is how 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 tight will the market be this time? We think it will be tight. And the question is, uh, what what will be the, the average day rate going forward? As I said initially there, if we the current day rate level that we, we see, which is basically maybe 225 to 250 in Norway, it, uh, to have $100,000 in EBITDA. And then in the UK, you probably need a day rate around $175,000 a day to be able to have that uh, $100,000 a day. And in West Africa, you're able to operate around 120 mark. You need $220,000 a day to be able to, to have $100,000 a day. That's where we are today. But, but looking at this, we think there's a significant upside. We think that the market will be very tight. And in many ways, what you guys are investing in by investing in in Dolphin is that you're investing into three assets. What uh, uh, will there be need for drilling going forward for the next uh, three to ten years? Will there be uh, a tighter market that we have seen in the past? And if that is, uh, if, if that is, uh, that if that happens, of course, how how high will the day rate level be uh, over the next uh, next years? And, uh, and that's what you're investing in. And um, as I said, as you see in Blackford in the middle there, 232,500 with a $12 million mob fee. The mob fees are also coming back over the last five to 10 years or after the last, let's say, downturn. There were no mob fees. Now on, on this contract to Nigeria, we got 12 million in, in mob fee in addition to the 232,500. 
and that, that gives uh, an average day rate probably in the 260-ish. Uh, and, and as I said, with an OPEX around 120, it's a decent contract. And uh, of course, next contract probably will be north of the 300 mark in in that uh, segment. So, so, so we think that the hundred thousand dollars a day is a conservative and good, good uh, assumption. Uh, summing up uh, the investment case again: Dolphin drilling, the first Norwegian driller, long operational track record, listed on Euronext Growth now. Float, 40%, with the aim of returning the existing fleet to work in what we perceive as a strong market with a great market outlook for the next years for the rigs. We will utilize the existing organization and our operational excellence to bolt in management opportunities uh, from uh, clients who has assets but doesn't have an operational platform to to get access to those cash flow and contracts and we will uh, look at opportunistic growth has to be very short term we don't want to ruin our dividend story and uh, using as we said or say on number three there box three use that attractive cash flow to maximize our dividend payout over the next years so that sums up uh, dolphin uh, drilling, the dolphin drilling opportunity. Uh, we think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a good timing to to enter and to list the company, and we think it's a good. Uh, we at least, uh, of course, it's up to you to make those evaluations. We think that there will be need for drilling for the next years to come. We think there's a need for energy in Europe, both oil and gas. And we think that uh, dolphin drilling has a, a solid and strong and important role to play in that regard. On that, uh, I think I conclude my presentation and wish you all um, a nice day. Thank you very much.